What's up everybody, Jen here. So lately I have been really on this help other people kick uh, as a way for me to kind of feel better about myself and a way to reduce my own anxiety is to offer advice that I'm really not qualified uh, to give just with my own experience. It's been making me feel a lot healthier and happier. So one cause, I suppose, if you want to call it that, that's been very near and dear to my heart is, um, is the aftermath of being ghosted and how difficult and challenging that process is to work through, uh, especially if you're more on the sensitive side. So I have explained in a previous video uh, that I went to a subreddit called uh, Our Ghosting, and it's been really, really great for my own healing to comfort others or to give advice from my own experience to other people. So I thought that I would transform that into video form and uh, discuss it here, and maybe it will help some other people that are on the tube or some other people that are just kind of browsing and that went through something similar and can't really make heads or tails of it. Some things that personally just helped me um, kind of move on from it or just some things that I was thinking about and starting to rationalize uh, within myself about what happened and how I can reframe this in my mind so that it's not so painful and just to kind of move forward, move forward and move on. So. I want to jump right into it um, and I know that my YouTube is all over the place and I do a bunch of weird random crap so for those of you that followed me for lifting stuff I'm sorry <laughs> and those of you that followed me for other stuff uh, I'm sorry if you also don't like this I mean I don't know I just hope that this maybe reaches one or two people uh, that might get some modest amount of comfort from it uh, that's the best I could kind of hope for so the first point that I want to bring up in terms of you know ghosting is no i guess i'll kind of everybody knows what it is but i'll just describe what it is if you're in a situation where you're in any type of relationship it could just be a friendship it could be a serious committed relationship it could be an online relationship it could be something from a dating app uh, it could really be anything and that person just ceases all contact with you uh, most most cases abruptly sometimes it's this slow torturous pain uh, not to like quick like a band-aid right off it, it, it hurts you stabs you slowly over and over uh, but just cutting off contact with you and not giving you closure not giving you answers um, when you ask what's going on they completely disregard your question uh, and you continue to reach out and they continue to not reply to you in any way shape or form and in lots of situations they block you uh, through all means of, of communication they'll block you on social media they'll block your telephone number and they basically will just uh, instead of having a conversation with you about why they want to terminate this relationship whatever it may be uh, they just cease to talk with you um, so it's a very painful thing and like I said uh, some people handle it better than others some people get a lot of anxiety from it and some people you know it might not phase them they'll say okay this person goes to me move on and uh, props to them that's a very very strong trait to have but for a lot of people it can be like a very uh, very torturous experience even um, through the reading I've done it's not even necessarily people that are prone to anxiety um, or any of that sort of thing it is just it catches them off guard and they can't make sense of what's going on and it can be a very challenging uh, a challenging thing to overcome and sometimes it takes people weeks sometimes it takes people months um, to move on from this experience and to kind of be able to trust people again so the first point I want to bring up about ghosting is a lot of people say uh, especially with what I've read uh, is that they feel like they're going crazy they feel like they're losing their mind and uh, that they're the nuts you know person in this in this situation they are the one that keeps reaching out they're the one that feels like they are losing their mind they're the ones that feels like the spotlight is on them uh, because of all these crazy actions that they're doing with trying to make uh, contact with this person or trying to have some kind of final communication they feel like they're the looney tune in this situation and to that uh, I relate I understand feeling like you're losing your marbles because you just want one single response to be at peace and you're not getting it and it kind of builds up more and more and more and uh, it does make you feel like you are going insane and that people are judging this insanity 
Uh, the reality is, is probably nobody even knows what's going on. How could anybody know what's going on in your head? Like nobody knows that this is even happening to you. You feel a lot crazier than you look if that's any kind of uh, solace. But the one main thing that I want to pose to you is what if this happened in real life? What if you are saying all these things to someone that you knew and felt close to and they just did not reply at all? They turned around and walked away and who would look crazier in that situation? If someone is kind of curling over, bawling, saying, please just tell me what's happened here. Um, and for that person to walk away and say zero words uh, and then go about their day as if you're not even a human being, who looks more like a sociopath? I'm just saying. Um, that kind of heartlessness to me looks a lot crazier than the person genuinely concerned about another individual uh, that's just looking for some answers. So, uh, and if you would like, I made a short video uh, to include in this video of what that would look like in real life. So here's my fantastic uh, minute and a half of acting. Uh, I hope you enjoy this and we'll, I will get to my uh, clip. Hey, it's me. I'm just reaching out again. Um, I haven't heard from you in a while and I just wanted to make sure that everything was okay. You know, I know that we kind of used to talk all the time and um, you're probably just really busy, so I'm not going to take it personally because, you know, you promised that, um, you know, you wouldn't ghost me. So I'm, I'm just making sure that everything is okay with you and, and I hope to hear from you soon. Again, uh, I don't want to keep bothering you. Like I said, I know that you're really busy. I'm just starting to get a little bit of anxiety as to why you're not responding. I'm a little bit concerned that you're not okay or that I did something wrong or that uh, I hurt you in some way. I would really just like to know what's been going on with you. Um, it's, it's kind of been giving me some trouble sleeping. so. At your earliest convenience, I'd really like to have a quick conversation about this. If you could please just answer me, if you could just say one, one last thing. I just need a little bit of closure. I need to know that you're okay. This is really, really bothersome for me. And I'm sorry, I know I keep reaching out. Uh, but you know, this is giving me a lot of anxiety, ghosting kind of, honestly. Ghosting makes me wish I was dead, so if you could please, if you could please just answer me, uh, I would feel a lot better, and, and then I would leave you alone. Okay, so we're back, and I hope you liked my little skit. It uh, just kind of shows how nuts it would be if somebody actually did this kind of uh, cruel uh, ghosting method of uh, cutting off contact in real life, uh, it, would be, uh, it would be pretty harsh to do that in real life. So why is it acceptable to do it uh, online or why is it acceptable to do it virtually? The, the fact of the matter is it's still a person. So whether it's a person that's right in front of your face um, or if it's a person that's through your phone, it's still a human being but uh, it's a lot easier to disconnect that uh, from your brain when they're not right in front of you. Um, but it shouldn't be acceptable one place or the other. So if somebody saw somebody doing that in real life, that person doing it would get shunned. Yet virtually, it seems to be like, oh yeah, that happens, you know. That's acceptable. This is this, uh, this age of technology where we can cut off people um, in a heartless manner and that's socially acceptable. So I think that uh, we should uh, petition to make it not socially acceptable because it is very damaging to people. Um, so the next thing that I was thinking about that I wanted to make a brief point about is a lot of people wondering um, what changed, what happened, uh, why did this person seem like such a wonderful human being and then all of a sudden they did something very, very hurtful to me and that seems uh, so out of character for them. And something I was kind of told myself is, you know what? they always had it in them to treat you this way. They always had it in them to do this to you. It's not like well, all of a sudden they got the flu and uh, you know most of their body aches and pains went away, but oops, 
they're left with this new thing uh, attached to their character that is able to be really cruel to you. Um, so it drastically changed because of this. Uh, one Saturday, they were a kind, gentle soul, and then by Monday, they were able to walk all over you. Um, they actually always had it in them to do this to you. And as hard as that is to accept, um, it's, it's the reality of the situation. A lot of people go back and forth, well, what parts of the relationship were real and what's, what parts of the relationship were fake? Uh, and I can't say in anybody's, any particular situation that everything that you endured was fake. And uh, I can't make those you know assumptions about your situation or how it differs from my situation. But I can kind of rest assured that this was still a part of their character, that they could do this um, to another individual, no matter how much they cared or how little they cared, being able to um, deeply hurt another individual uh, is something that was just part of their being uh, all along. So then you also have to ask yourself, well, why would I want to be with somebody that is capable of causing another individual such emotional pain? Um, you know, if you can, again, reframe it that way, uh, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be with an individual that is capable of hurting other people or can be so uh, careless about the emotions of another individual, whether it's me or another stranger or somebody else. If you can hurt somebody to that degree, you're not somebody that I really want to be in my life, let alone somebody that I want to have a, a real deep relationship with. And the next point that I want to move on to that I feel like has been a very, very noticeable trend uh, on the Reddit there and also noticeable to me and lots of questions that I kept asking myself or kept asking this individual is, what did I do wrong? What could I have done wrong? Oh, this is all my fault. Um, just flat out stop it. <laughs> it, is, it is not your fault. Um, and even if you did do something that hurt them or that was somewhat off-putting, why would you want to be with somebody that handles those kinds of upset feelings uh, like a toddler? Like a toddler throwing a tantrum, giving the silent treatment uh, that will not even discuss this with you. If you said something that bothered them, would you not want to be with somebody that would say, hey, um, when you have time, I'd like to talk about this kind of one thing. I want to get clarification on what you meant or this and this action that you did kind of hurt me. Uh, would you really want to be with somebody that instead of having those conversations with you, they just didn't talk to you? What kind of relationship would that be? How lengthy would that relationship be? How torturous would that relationship be if it were to be lengthy? Um, that would be constant emotional upset and turmoil for you to always wonder if they're not talking to me, did I mess up? Uh, chances are you did not mess up. And uh, if we really had it where they completely told us the truth, could you also imagine that? Instead of, well, what, what did I do wrong? Uh, if you think about it, what realistically could have happened here? And if they were courageous enough to tell us, it might look a little something like this. Uh, actually, uh, I'm sleeping with somebody else and I like that person more. Uh, I met somebody new and I'm more attracted to that person, so I'm going to pursue that person instead of you. Uh, and I mean, any number of hurtful things. Uh, I was using you for sex and now I don't need to do that anymore. I was using you to boost my ego and I don't need to do that anymore. I was using you as a distraction and now I'm too busy to even need a distraction or now uh, I have a new distraction and uh, that is more interesting and appealing to me. I was manipulating you this whole time to get something that I wanted from you and now I no longer need to do that. Uh, so any list of things, uh, I created a false persona. I was never actually this nice person. I'm actually married with a family. Oosh, that would be harsh. Uh, there's a whole number of things that if people literally could not lie to you, uh, they may tell you these things as the reason why they're cutting off contact with you. And uh, very, very few people would have the, I guess, and you wouldn't even say integrity because those answers are not a person that has integrity, but very, very few people would have the courage to admit those things because if they actually told them to a person, then they'd have to admit them to themselves that they 
did this to another person. Most people don't say outwardly to you, I am using you and I no longer have a use for you. People use people, people manipulate people all the time, but very few people will say, I'm going to discard you now. Uh, I am completed, uh, you know, what I needed you for and have a great life, but I'm going to move on and I have a few other people to use before I settle down and stop using people. Uh, very few people would have the courage to do that. And a lot of people say, I'd much rather just know what happened. I'm in agony. I really want to know why this person did this. If it's any of those things that I just said there, which in high likelihood it, it was, do you need to hear that? Do you need to hear those words? Some people say, yeah, I really do need that proof to see how awful that person was. Some people say, no, you know what? That actually would be more hurtful to know those things. Um, but at the end of the day, asking yourself what you did wrong, when chances are this was a pretty crappy, selfish person that was capable of hurting you in this manner, stop asking what you did wrong and don't ask them. God, I know how pathetic that feels to keep asking them and saying sorry when you have no idea what you even did. You could ruminate for hours over your final conversations and nitpick a few words and wondering if they took it the wrong way or wondering if these actions that you have no idea uh, really hurt them. Uh, but if you really, if you even look into it for more than five minutes and you can't pinpoint something without feeling like you're going insane and really grasping at straws, then leave it to rest. You did nothing wrong. They just decided, again, they didn't have the use for you that they originally did. And again, that's in more maybe situations where uh, you weren't in a long, long relationship. I do see that even some people were ghosted after like a two year long relationship. That person just cuts and run. And uh, that's probably a different situation than if you met someone and went on some dates on a dating app and you thought it was good or you're talking online. Those are two very different situations, both painful. And I won't, uh, I won't invalidate the connection that one feels versus another. Um, but the relationship uh, ending of a relationship is likely to be a lot more complicated with a lot more unanswered questions. Um, just kind of a high level uh, explanation as to please just stop asking yourself what you did wrong and stop apologizing to them for things that you didn't even do, like things that you are not to blame for. Um, and that's, I think, one of the biggest things. Like, let that concept go in your mind of I am to blame uh, because you're not. And one other thing that I want to note here uh, was one of the biggest realizations that I had that maybe helped uh, bring me the highest level of peace is realizing how much I was projecting myself and my own thoughts and my own feelings on what this other person must be thinking and what they must be feeling. I kept thinking, oh, he must feel so guilty for hurting me this way. And I said, no, I would feel very guilty if I hurt somebody this way. That doesn't mean that that person feels guilty that they are doing this. They may not feel a single damn thing about what they are doing. But congratulations, if you're projecting that, that means that you have it in you to, to care enough not to do this to another individual. And please do not lose that. That is a, a valuable trait to possess, <laughs> possess the, the compassion for another individual to not want to hurt them in this way. And sometimes they use that expression, well, hurt people hurt people. Um, oh, please, that is such bullshit. <laughs> Fine, you got hurt by another person. Do not use that to justify hurting another individual because then the cycle just continues on and on and on and then that person hurts another person and that per hurt person hurts another person. And that is a toxic mindset to have to even justify um, treating another individual poorly. So if you can and the power is in you and you realize that you are projecting this goodness within you and assuming they are that way, thank yourself. Oh, good. I have a high enough level of compassion that uh, this would really bother me to do this to another person. And I'm going to come hell or high water. I am not going to lose that. Uh, I'm not going to lose that ability to care, uh, care that much about other people that come in and out of my life. And the same thing I did in terms of projecting was about projecting my insecurities. I kept thinking, he must be really, he must be insecure. And that's why he's cutting off contact, um, you know, because he feels badly about himself. No, I'm insecure. 
I am concerned that I am not good enough for other people. I worry about this, this, and this, and this, and this not being up to par, and this not meeting their standards, and that I want that reassurance that I am enough. That doesn't mean that that person is insecure and that I have to go above and beyond to reassure them that they are enough because for starters, they're treating me like trash by disregarding that I even exist and that I'm even a human being with very hurt emotions. And on top of that, I'm, I'm trying to comfort them for, for possible insecurities that aren't even really there. They are just my own. So I am apologizing for nothingness and I'm, I'm reaching out with all this empathy and compassion and comfort for insecurities that I possess when what they're doing is walking all over me and heightening my insecurities. That is projection. I am just saying, well, I'm insecure, so they must be too. Don't just realize and recognize that within yourself, this is you. That is not that person. And I know that's talked about with, you know, one of those thought biases, and you can look into that more. There's a lot of, you know, books that, that talk about thought biases, and that's one of them where you get really, really frustrated because you are a certain way and you don't treat people like this and you deeply care about, um, you know, how, how you're affecting other people and you deeply care about what other people are going through and you want to offer that uh, support and they don't do that in return. Um, and then you get even angrier because you think that everybody should be just as you are. Uh, but the reality is, is that People are different. People are their own unique person. And uh, that person that is hurting you is not you. And if you are a, you know, a deeply sympathetic, empathetic, caring, loving person, that's great. Keep that in you. Uh, but you have to recognize that that is you and not every person out there feels that way or thinks that way or has those priorities uh, or even has those strengths. That's a strength that you have to be that compassionate and empathetic for other people. That's a strength. And they do not possess that clearly if they're able to hurt you in this way. They possess other strengths, other kind of mental toughnesses uh, or any other strength that makes them an asset to society in their own unique way. But this empathy that you have is not something that they have. And you need to really work on disassociating your own traits from them and I think it can kind of help uh, maybe ease a little bit of the confusion of how could they possibly do this to me and sleep at night how could they not be so consumed with guilt how do they even look at themselves in the mirror it's like, well because they don't have those traits they're not you um, and you are a good you're a good wholesome person so keep that on and then find somebody else that has traits that you are looking for um, if you want somebody obviously that is able to communicate with you uh, in healthy ways, then seek out that trait, that genuine trait in another individual, because those are the kinds of values, things that you value, and those are the strengths that you are looking for in another person. And I guess this is my last note. This is my last point of topic uh, that I want to discuss. Again, as we're all just talking about communication or lack thereof in this video, and could you imagine uh, continuing on being in a relationship where any kind of difficult conversation that person was not able to carry out with you or that person avoided that conversation and uh, just would leave the room or never really wanted to talk with you about important conversations. And I don't just mean conversations about the relationship itself. Uh, not being able to have the ending communication of a relationship is that person avoiding a difficult conversation that they do not wish to have with you kind of shows that they are not really very well versed in having tough conversations or having open communications even if they are uncomfortable and unpleasant. Would you really want to have a relationship with somebody that was not able to talk with you about important matters because they found the conversations too uncomfortable and they would rather leave, <laughs> they would rather turn around and go away. Uh, if you said, you know, I really need to talk to you about, uh, you know, this illness that I have. Oh, I don't want to talk about it. 
okay? I really need to talk to you about uh, the struggles that I'm having at work and our, you know, potential financial difficulties if I were to leave this job or I really need to talk to you about this, any difficult conversation, any difficult topic and that includes the relationship. I really need to talk to you about some things I'm noticing in our relationship um, and I think some ways that it could improve or these are some things that uh, my needs are not being met in this way and I'd really like to sit and have this discussion with you um, or let's sit down and talk about our future. Um, do we want to have children? Do we want to always live here? I really would like to move. I don't know how you feel about that. Uh, any important conversation, you know, even minor conversations that just might be uh, uncomfortable to them. Do you really want somebody that doesn't want to have or cannot have those conversations with you because it is too challenging for them to have those conversations um, and that communication is difficult for this individual and that is proof in a ghosting situation. It's avoidance of a difficult, unpleasant, uncomfortable, challenging uh, conversation and for me something that I consider to be of the utmost importance of a relationship is willingness to communicate about life and where we're going and all the ups and downs or struggles, any of that kind of thing. Uh, it's very, very important for me that I'm with somebody that can talk those things through with me, uh, whether it be just something that's affecting me and I need a sounding board uh, or if it's affecting both of us and I need decisions to be made, I need input, but it's too difficult for them to be a part of that conversation. They'd rather say, oh, I'll, I'll do it tonight, we'll talk tonight. And well, they stay out late. <laughs> Lo and behold, they stay out late. Uh, then they're too tired. They don't want to have the conversation. Uh, then they go to bed. Uh, then they go to the gym. Uh, they go out with their boys. Uh, they go out drinking. They come home drunk. They don't want to have the conversation then. I need communication. It's very important in a relationship to me. If communication is something that you value, and chances are anybody that's been wounded by ghosting does really value communication. Otherwise, it wouldn't have affected them as much as somebody else then you're looking for a partner that also values that and that can give you that and that can meet those needs. And clearly the person that uh, walked away without a conversation is not going to ever be able to meet those needs. They shy away from hard conversations. That is not something that you want in a partner. So this video could have been just as much for myself uh, as anybody else. And I say that with, you know, completely genuine open arms is that every single thing that I said here is all just comprised of things that I needed to hear that can be very, very difficult to hear, um, but that I do find uh, a lot of comfort in knowing that other people went through very, very similar experiences to the ones I did, some not as harsh, some a lot harsher, and uh, it was comforting to me to know that I was not alone. I was not going crazy. I did nothing wrong. And, um, and that nobody can like, invalidate the connection that you had with this person. A lot of people will just say, oh, it was only six months. It was only three months. It was only five dates. A connection is a connection. And if one person felt that intensely, then that should not be disputed by someone else that can't understand why they would have this connection. And I mean, some people feel love when other people are not feeling that same love. And for that fantasy to die, that plug to be pulled, when you do feel like, oh, I love this person, I love everything about this person, and all of a sudden, they never talk to you again, and you don't get to know why. Um, it doesn't really matter how long it took for you to feel those emotions. The bottom line is you felt that love and uh, it can be traumatizing for that fantasy um, to die and to not only just die, but to die in this kind of very violent, uh, it was killed and stabbed to death uh, right in front of you with no answers and no closure and no goodbyes. I guess if you're using that metaphor, it was killed right in front of you abruptly. You didn't even get to say goodbye to this love that you thought was true and uh, Take the time you need to grieve that. Nobody can dictate how long it's going to take and do not feel like a pathetic fool because three months later you're still crying over something that meant nothing to somebody else. Uh, it's a hard thing. 
it's a hard thing, it's a shock to the system, and you're not going to get through it if all you do is call yourself pathetic and if you lack uh, compassion for yourself. Because like we said, you obviously have this compassion for others in spades, so put it in yourself. Give it towards yourself. Be as nice to yourself as you can, because that's the only way that you're going to get over this. And uh, that's my closing thought for today, and I hope that somebody was able to benefit from this. And for all y'all out there that are in the thick of some kind of ghosting hell storm, I wish you well, and I wish you a speedy recovery, and I wish you as much self-kindness uh, as you can possibly give yourself.